Hello and good morning. It's a beautiful morning over here. In fact, I feel quite happy today. I'm missing Hermi. He is out for a doctor's appointment, but then, you know, I've been ditching him with doctor's appointment for quite a while. So I'm alone over here and we have a very, very special guest today. Avinash, I've, I've been seeing his work in social media for a while and we were kind of connected in uh, Instagram as well as on Twitter spaces for a couple of times. And uh, today I got to meet him on our space and uh, we had a small chit chat. So it's always a pleasure to know people, youngsters who come who are coming into this and who are very, very keen on it and with beautiful work. So Avinash is a software professional. He is working with Wipro and he started with photography in 2019. And like us, like me and Hermi, he started to he started with a basic camera and the kit lens, and then kind of a traveler to begin with, and fall in love with nature. Started with birds, got into mammals, and now completely into wildlife. So that is my, uh, you know, that is the extent I know about him. Now let's welcome him and let's learn more about him, his journey from him. So let's welcome Avinash. Hi, Hi ma'am. Hi, ma'am. How are you? Good, dear. Good, good, good. Thank yeah. you. Uh, hi, all. Uh, hi, everyone who's watching. And I uh, hope everyone is doing good. So, uh, myself, Avinash Rajendran. Uh, I'm a passionate wildlife photographer from Kerala. So, my native is Kannu, uh, especially uh, Aero. So, uh, I'll start with my journey. Yes. Actually, uh, I started photography in 2019. Uh, yeah, almost three years back. So uh, I never thought I'll become a wildlife photographer. I'm um, not professionally, but uh, in passion too, because uh, I was passionate in uh, bodybuilding and traveling actually. So uh, I love to travel uh, more so with my friends. So uh, when I uh, got a job in Wipro, uh, I got many friends and uh, most of them are uh, addicted in traveling. So uh, we used to go uh, many of the places with our own bike. So uh, during that time, I thought to buy a camera just only to capture uh, our photos uh, with bikes and the place uh, where we visit, those kind of things. And uh, I bought a Nikon D5300 uh, along with 18-55mm uh, and 70-300mm uh, lens. And uh, actually, that was in uh, 2018 October, and the date is October 12. <laughs> I know because uh, that's my first DSLR, so I remember that one. I purchased from uh, Flipkart uh, that uh, big billion sale was there, so uh, I bought that one. So uh, initial days, uh, I never get any uh, support from uh, my parents or anyone. I know because most of the people uh, face the uh, situation like this. So uh, what my uh, father said is, uh, why are you wasting so much money uh, in like these products? Because <laughs> I, I want a bike, uh, I want a camera <laughs> and many things like that because uh, they don't understand. That's the problem because uh, there is a huge uh, generation gap. So uh, in their uh, ages, that's uh, like uh, saving money and uh, supporting the family. But uh, when it comes to me, uh, I want to live my life. So uh, traveling and uh, following my passion, that's my dream. So uh, I started the, my uh, journey with that one, D5300 and 7300 then. So uh, in that time, uh, like uh, I said, uh, I used to capture uh, my images, uh, means uh, with my bike and my friends, the place where we visit, all those things. But uh, when I uh, get the chance to capture a bird, actually it was from uh, Uti, because uh, last uh, four and a half years I was working in Coimbatore. So oh. it, it was very uh, near to Uti. So uh, we used to go there uh, most of the weekends, especially uh, just to drink a cup of tea. <laughs> because I love the thing there. So, um, uh, while going there, uh, these uh, house sparrows and all, uh, the, we can see many of them up there. So, uh, I got a chance to capture a few of them with my 70 drum lens. Uh, then I just realized that uh, that uh, taking pictures of birds, that give me more pleasure, more happiness. So, uh, like that, I started uh, my journey with uh, wildlife photography. 
So uh, most of the weekends uh, I visit uh, OT, uh, Kunur, and uh, the all other nearby uh, places. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't have any idea uh, how to use a camera during that time. So when I bought the camera, uh, I don't know anything. I don't have zero knowledge in uh, camera and uh, all these things. I don't know uh, what is ISO, aperture, shutter speed, nothing. I, I <laughs> so uh, when I got that uh, camera, uh, I managed to mount the lens, but I don't know how to dismount it. I, okay. I was totally <laughs> confused. So uh, I just uh, called a friend who had the same camera and he uh, told me like this uh, one small button. So you can press that one and uh, <laughs> dismount that one. <laughs> so I, I, uh, from that moment in now, I, so that's how I started. Um, okay. And I uh, used that combination uh, 5300 and 7300 uh, for one and a half years. So uh, most of my bird photographs are uh, with that combo only because mm -hmm. uh, in initial stages it was uh, totally difficult, very difficult to approach the birds. Whenever I approach a bird, it will fly away. So uh, I just um, contacted some friends uh, who I met uh, from uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're from Kerala only. Okay. Uh, Ajit, yeah, I can say his name is uh, Ajit, Ajit Siodasan. Okay. Because uh, he has uh, two... Uh, 50 to 250 mm Canon lens, kit lens, and he captured amazing uh, bird photographers with that lens. So okay. uh, I contacted him, uh, how you are taking uh, these much beautiful images with the 250 mm lens? So he uh, told me how to approach the birds uh, and how to get more closer shots with that uh, kit lens. And I followed those steps and I uh, learned uh, that uh, rules and something like a rule of third, how to frame all these things from uh, YouTube. Uh, like uh, yeah. the exposure, ISO, shutter speed, everything from YouTube, I just learned. Mm -hmm. Because whenever I get uh, free time, uh, even if uh, in office too, uh, I just uh, always uh, sell something related to photography only. When I get time, I just uh, learn myself. So like that, I started. Okay. And uh, one year back, I upgraded my camera to uh, Nikon D500 mm -hmm. and uh, 200 to 500 mm and mm -hmm. uh, one lens also I bought uh, six months back yeah. so uh, now I am uh, concentrating more on macro photography because okay. that's really an amazing world uh, whenever we go out we can find some new subject we can take something different so now I am I'm more into uh, macro photography so I'll start uh, sharing the screen great ma'am is it visible now Yes, it is. So uh, I already uh, said uh, everything about me. Uh, yeah. This uh, uh, this was the first wildlife image I captured. Uh, actually, uh, this one captured with the mobile phone, Microsoft Lumia 535. Okay. Uh, it was from uh, Bandipur, I think. Actually, we were traveling from Mysore to Uti. Uh, uh -huh. I was there in Mysore for around uh, one year. One year. So uh, while in there, me and my friends uh, went from there to Uti, and uh, this is an image captured during that uh, journey. So I was in bike and uh, capturing uh, this photo with that uh, button, that uh, uh, shutter button. So uh -huh. I was just uh, continuously clicking on while uh, moving because I, I was sitting in back seat. So uh -huh. I can manage to click. Actually, uh, this uh, yeah, this is my first wildlife photo before um, buying a camera. Okay. Okay, uh, so, uh, sorry. These are some photos I captured with my uh, 70, 300 mm lens. Mm -hmm. with the leaf, like double zero. Sorry. Yeah, and uh, these things are from uh, Coimbatore only. It's because uh, it was near to my room. And uh, there are many birds, like mm -hmm. sunbirds, um, uh, Prinia, Bushchat, everything. They are quite uh, familiar with these uh, people and all. So uh, I can approach them uh, easily. Uh, in initial stages, they will fly away. But uh, when I learned uh, how to approach a bird, it was quite easy for me to uh, get more closer images with 70 mm. So these are also from 70 mm only. And mm -hmm. uh, 
all these three images are not cropped. That's the uh, thing. These are what I get from uh, 300 ml. These are uh, one hanging parakeet. Uh, that's from my home. Okay. And that uh, before couples both. Uh, these were near to my uh, room only, Coimbatu. Uh -huh. Actually, uh, there are um, many peoples uh, in that area, in Coimbatu, mostly in Tamil Nadu and Palakkad. Uh, areas so we can see many uh, peoples that uh -huh. we got. So uh, in my uh, room said I can see many of them, but uh, it's very difficult to get a, a couple like this, male and female. So yeah. they were um, in some romantic mood actually. <laughs> so uh, I I was uh, I was in night shift actually in that day. So. After finishing my shift and uh, regular workouts, I just returned to my room, mm -hmm. and uh, I just uh, saw only one uh, that male big uh, people in there. So I didn't get a picture of a male female, female uh, sorry, uh, male uh, peacock like this uh, during that time. So uh, I just uh, back my camera and go to the place, mm -hmm. and I just uh, hide myself in these bushes. Actually, okay. it's uh, almost uh, half of my size. These bushes. So uh, I hid myself in, in that bushes and waited for around uh, four or five hours. Okay. I didn't make any movement from the just sit there and uh, waited for some uh, perfect moment to capture. Okay. So the second, uh, the third one, uh, I think it's with uh, seventy or hundred mm, and the second one is with uh, three hundred mm. Okay. And, uh, till now, that's my favorite shot. Which yes, one? Which one no. you said you said? The second one, second one. Second one. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll uh, move to the next one. Yeah. So these are also uh, with Sandy Kanaram only. First mm -hmm. one from Nelliambadi. It's a okay. uh, hornbill uh, flying uh, habitat shot. And beautiful. second one is a white trimmed uh, Munya. That's from my uh, native. Actually, uh, my native is uh, say a wetland area. So mm -hmm. uh, many paddy fields and rivers are though. So uh, I can easily find some birds. So that's not an easy task for me to uh, find some birds and capture. That's and, great. Uh, the third one, that flamingos are from Trishu, cold wetlands. Okay. Uh, they used to visit uh, during migration. They are passive migrants here. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I was in Coimbatore, I just heard that uh, four flamingos are during uh, Trishu and I uh, went from the Coimbatore to Trishu to capture only these things. Actually, uh, during that time, I was only pointing uh, some uh, particular things because uh, there I can find many uh, spoonbills, painted stroke and many other uh, migrant birds. But I was only focusing this flamingo. So I forgot to take the pictures of other birds. <laughs> and still I, have, still, I don't have uh, photos of uh, spoonbills. Okay. Uh, Hope I can get soon because uh, that day I was only focusing on flamingos and I went there only for that only. Okay, and, uh, I got some around uh, 100, not 100, maybe 1000 images of these flamingos. And this is not a crop done, this is what I should with uh, 300 mm, 70 to mm, that match. Okay, sorry for that. Yeah, okay. Uh, next one is a uh, flycatcher. And okay. that was captured from uh, Kuno, Sims Park. Okay, it's uh, actually it's just like a normal park where people can visit and sit, uh, kids can play. So uh, there are many trees, plants, flowers, and also uh, we can find many birds there. And all those birds are very uh, familiar with uh, humans. So they won't fly away if we uh, go too close up. Means we can't touch them like, like that. Like uh, in a safe, uh, safer distance, we can capture them. So it's a, I think uh, it's the best place to uh, for every photographer who is uh, started into wildlife. So you can find birds easily. You can capture them, whatever lens you have, like a 70, 300, or 200 to 500, uh, 150, 600, like that. If you have uh, a tele lens like uh, 500 or like that, you can get. Uh, Close-up shots, like portraits, like uh, their face only, like those kind of images. If you and these are my uh, first wildlife images when I went to wild. 
So the first one is a tiger from Kabini. All all these images are from Kabini only, Nagarkole, Karnataka. And uh, sorry, man. Beautiful collection. Thank you, thank you, man. These are uh, during my initial stage only, and uh, during that time I don't have a two hundred to five hundred lens. Uh, it was with the 70 300 mm only but uh, that uh, tiger and leopards are with the 200 to 500 uh, i just got a lens from uh, one guy who was in the bus because everyone was uh, capturing this tiger with the 200 to 500 or 150 600 like bazooka so i only have one 70 300 mm lens so i was totally sad in that time because i also paid the same amount like others and i'm not getting good image so uh, I, I just met uh, one guy, uh, he's also from Kerala. So I asked him to take only two photographs. I just borrowed his uh, 200 to 500 mm lens and captured this uh, tiger image. So uh, that's my uh, first, uh, that first tiger in first safari. Actually, uh, that was in 2019, uh, April 15th, the date. And oh. it was my first wildlife safari and I got a tiger in that same safari. You um, are really lucky, <laughs> and that's a beautiful <laughs> shot. You know, thank it's, you. it's really cool. Thank you, thank you very much. And the uh, second one is a samba deer. Actually, a uh, female was also there, and they were in a, a romantic mood, like uh, they were trying to mate. But uh, when uh, other vehicles came, they just uh, ran away from them. Oh. And the third one, the leopard. Actually, that's a mating pair of uh, the black panther in Kabini. And we just seen missed it. the chance. Sorry, ma'am. Have you seen it? The black leopard? No, 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 no. Because I am I have visitor, I have took around 24, 26 safaris till now, but I didn't get a chance to see. Because if we have uh luck on that day, definitely I will get because uh, the same day some other guys got the uh, uh blackie. So what happened? No, uh, actually uh, they were together during that time. It was uh -huh. on the 2090 December, I think that's okay. the winter time. So uh, uh, these uh, two were together, and when uh, we saw uh, this lady, uh, Cleo, but I I forgot her name. They mm -hmm. named something, and I forgot that one. And this beautiful uh, lady was uh, just uh, crossing a road that in the forest, and mm -hmm. uh, we got a chance to watch him, and uh, just only got a few three or four seconds like this. She just uh, sit and uh, turn back to watch what Black is doing, whether he's coming or just sitting there. <laughs> so actually, she waited for uh, quite long. But uh, when other vehicles came, he just uh, ran away okay. to the opposite side. So we just missed that time. But a uh, few vehicles like uh, JL are there. Our vehicle waited there and they got a chance to watch these uh, two couple. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, you know, wildlife waiting is a major game. You really yeah. need to wait. Because uh, if we are uh, using that uh, forest department's vehicle, oh, they won't okay. wait so much time. Yeah. And the JLR is not uh, affordable yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I always uh, used to go with the uh, FT department. And okay. uh, next one is with uh, 7300 only. That's okay. it. My elephant and uh, 2020 uh, I just updated my lens to 200 to 500 I bought uh, used one from my friend only so mm -hmm. uh, this is the first shot I captured with that one 200 to 500 uh, it was from Coimbatore and uh, actually uh, I was uh, following a P4 means sorry a peahen and a her chicks uh, three chicks for the I was following them to capture uh, a nice photo, means in a good background. So, uh, but I just uh, got a notice on a small squirrel. He was on some uh, wall and he, uh, he was uh, trying to get something to eat. But I just uh, followed him, I mean, monitored him for uh, an hour actually because he was more active at that time. So, uh, I just monitored him for a while. Uh, around an hour and uh, this moment actually uh, I, it was really a mesmerizing one because uh, this one just stand up and uh, started smell that flower that little flower 
and it was a quick moment just only uh, three or four second i got this because he just smelled that one and started to eat that flower <laughs> i got only few seconds to capture but uh, six images i captured and all six went very good so this is one uh, my favorite one squirrel one and the second one is from konor uh, only uh, nilgiri flycatcher female so uh, like that uh, i said uh, with 200 to 500 mm we can capture portrait images of birds from the so, uh, most visit plate for all bird photographers Mm -hmm. uh, last one from my village only. Uh, okay. So it's a common bird here. And these are some photos I captured with uh, 5300 and 200 to 500. And, Great. Uh, that first tiger, I think it was in 2020, uh, October or November, I think. And uh, she was managing to get all these dates. I mean, I can understand certain images, but more than most every image. <laughs> because all, all these are like a dream to me. I never uh, thought I could make uh, these things. So for tiger images, uh, I remember all those dates and all, but uh, not for other. Only my favorite images, I remember the dates. And actually, uh, she was with her, with, uh, her two cups. Uh, and uh, her pair too, that um, matching mm -hmm. pair, and we got a chance to visit uh, four tigers in one single safari, but uh, right. didn't get a chance to capture four of them together because they were like uh, walking separately. Oh, First, okay. the mom went uh, across the road, and second, uh, those two cubs one by one, and last, uh, that male sorry male tiger. Okay. So. And uh, the second one that uh, Jan Squirrel from Nilyamari, and I used to visit the uh, most of my weekends in, uh, when I was in Coimbatore. Mm -hmm. So it's my favorite place uh, with that climate and all these uh, animals and birds because it's fa uh, famous for that uh, hornbills. Mm -hmm. Now, hornbills, we can find many other animals there. And that uh, third and fourth, the sloth bear and uh, go from uh, uh, cabinet only okay and this is my first image of, of a slot bear too i only got two chances to capture them and this is the uh, first one okay moving to next slide and uh, so 2090 and 20 is almost over so uh, so in 2020 uh, that uh, corona and pandemic situation came to the so uh, so we can't move, go anywhere in any national park. It was completely locked down here. And uh, the rain too. Uh, it was during the monsoon time I started uh, macro photography. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard uh, about these reverse macro technologies from my friends, uh, like okay. uh, uh, Kiran Kevi and some uh -huh. other friends too. And uh, he was capturing macros with 18 to 55 mm. That's really amazing photo. So, uh, I just bought a uh, reverse a ring for my 18-55mm uh, lens uh -huh. and uh, it was actually uh, one of the toughest and cheapest met method for macro photography, that uh, reverse macro. Uh, we need uh, more uh, patience and practice to uh, capture macro. Wow. And, uh, the, yeah, as I mentioned here, the difficult part in reverse macro is uh, getting that. Uh, focus because uh, we only get uh, focus at a particular point so uh, that autofocus won't work because uh, this lens and the camera are not in touch we have just mm -hmm. uh, reversely so there won't be any uh, electronic communication between them so uh, the manual focus also won't work because we are reversing the lens only uh, possible way to get that uh, finding the correct focus point in that zoom so uh, Seen that 1855 mm also, I uh, most time I used uh, 35 or 45 mm to capture macro. So I get some more detailed, uh, more details in that because when we uh, go more closer, like uh, 18 mm is more closer and 55 mm is a uh, little bit wide when compared to small subjects. So uh, if we use a 50, uh, 18 mm, the, we won't get uh, more areas in focus, but if we're using 55 mm. 
we can get uh, the maximum from that lens. So uh, I use a, a medium size like uh, 35 or 45 to uh, capture a macro. And uh, we have to practice more on this field because uh, in initial stages, it's very difficult, especially uh, without a flash or like uh, those things. And uh, I struggled a lot. Uh, I bought uh, that uh, reverse ring and tried to capture some macro photos of uh, plant hopper and grass hoppers, but I didn't get a good image uh, in the initial stage. So I just dropped that macro uh, for a month. And when I got a contact uh, to Kiran, I just uh, asked him how he's taking and he suggested me like, uh, we need to, uh, we need a uh, external light, to, light source like uh, the built-in flash or external one and with a good diffuser to uh, get the light on the subject. So uh, I just make something uh, DIY uh, diffusers for my built-in flash and started capturing the uh, macros. So what he said is we need more patience. We have to uh, go more closer to the subject and we have to find the uh, correct focus, that uh, focal length, everything. So it was really difficult, but uh, if you practice uh, for one or two weeks and we have enough patience, definitely we can make amazing things from this uh, reverse macro because that reverse ring cost only uh, 400, yeah, 400 rupees, Indian rupees, uh, that's around uh, uh, six or seven dollars like that. So it's the cheapest way to uh, capture macro. We have a so, couple of questions. How do you like to proceed? I mean, do you want to uh, go with the questions in the end or you would like to answer it as and when it pops up? I think we can answer last one. Okay, fine. I think that's good. Okay, so uh, all of my images are single shot only. Uh, I'm not using any stacking or composition, anything like that. All my images are single. Uh -huh. uh, because I love, uh, I love to get uh, maximum result from the field itself uh, because right. I'm not uh, good in editing and all uh, and still I'm uh, using my mobile device to edit like oh. only version and uh, so I used to capture only single shots great thank you ma'am so these are something uh, captured with uh, 18 to 55 mom so whenever we go out to capture macro we can uh, find these little uh, beauties and uh, we can capture different frames dif uh, every day like uh, that uh, their little world is very wide so we can find many subjects and their beautiful moments and the first one is an uh, ant which is sucking the uh, honey dew of her salad actually salads and aphids like uh, there's some uh, small insect like uh, they are really very small, like a pen dot, the no. size, like one millimeter. No, they won't be one millimeter, very less only. So mm -hmm. uh, with the macro lens, uh, actually we can't get uh, this much details. But if you use okay. some additional adapter, we can get. But uh, just with the 90mm or 105, it's very hard to get. And the uh, second one uh, is a uh, jumping spider with a damsel fly kill. So right. uh, even that, uh, I think I already shared damselfly with the jumping spider kill uh, the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here. Yeah. So here it's a damselfly with the jumping sp spider kill and there it's a, a spider with damselfly kill. Like this, we can find uh, many things in this macro world. Once you enter to this, it's really amazing and uh, you won't get that so like that and that uh, third one uh, that's it uh, set b and the fourth one is a uh, close-up of the damsel flight eyes actually they have a uh, total five eyes and uh, mm -hmm. with thousands of lens <laughs> uh, and the fourth one it's a sweat b again and with some bug actually i didn't notice that bug uh, when i captured i was only focusing on that uh, b so when oh, I okay. uh, capture the photo and check my camera, then only I go to see that one because it was very small. I didn't notice <laughs> <during> capturing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 
like uh, 1850 mm uh, it's only suitable for very small subject if you are uh, trying to capture with the uh, snake uh, like amphibians or reptiles or uh, butterflies it's really uh, hard to get with an 18 to 55 we can get only some portraits like uh, the face or some patterns like that only so you won't get a okay. uh, full size image uh, that's why i'm showing mm -hmm. this one uh, okay. uh, i saw a dragon flight a panthala flossens i think yeah so captured with 18 to 55 only but uh, i was trying to capture some full body image but uh, didn't get because it's uh, 18 to 55 mm so a uh, few of my friends suggested to uh, go with the macro lens so uh, i bought a uh, used 90mm tamron 90mm and that's really an amazing product from tamron okay. so all these images are uh, from 90mm only uh, first mm -hmm. one first uh, first one uh, yeah this is a blue banded bee and this is also that's mm -hmm. a single one three of them uh, actually, uh, bees are my favorite subject in macro. Uh, it's yeah. actually not that easy to find these beauties because blue banded bee and the neon cuckoo bee. Uh, I have to spend around uh, four or five months only to uh, capture these things because it, it was very hard for me to find. It. They were mm. not in my area. So uh -huh. uh, I saw some beautiful images in, on Instagram and Facebook by others. So uh -huh. it, was, it was my dream to capture these two bees, blue oh. banded and neon could be. Uh, I'll share the neon could be in next slide. So mm -hmm. uh, I just uh, spent around four or five months in my area to find these. But mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the real interesting thing in macro is uh, whenever we try to uh, find something, uh, it, it was very hard. It, is, it will be very hard to find. But mm -hmm. once you uh, notice the subject, then you can find them any day. Whenever you go out, you can find them easily. That is the interesting thing in macro. So yeah. uh, next one is a, a blue bottle bee. Sorry, blue bottle fly uh -huh. uh, with the droplet. Uh, actually, uh, they don't have that sweating mechanism like us. Uh, like mammals uh, and uh, humans have sweating mechanism, but they don't have. So they use uh, their own uh, some fluid uh, mm -hmm. out them. It, that uh, heat will produce out and they will uh, take that inside again like that uh, they are cooling themselves okay uh, the third one is a macro of uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, forest lizard I think forgot the name mm -hmm. uh, these lizards are common in my area because I have a garden with uh, 200 300 uh, flowers and plants oh. so most of the time uh, i can easily find uh, lizards uh, butterflies and some other bees and all things in my garden itself and the remaining are from my garden only uh, mm -hmm. that uh, lizard and this bee i forgot its name mm -hmm. and the lost wine snake uh, red from your butterfly. garden S sorry ma'am the wine snake is from your garden yeah from my garden only uh, Actually, uh, I saw only two or three times here. Okay. And I just got a chance to capture it. It was a rainy day. So okay. uh, this this a raindrop or his head. Okay. And I got a chance to capture a few, uh, four or five images because I, I want to uh, capture more images because I'm using a flashlight. So that light is definitely uh, like uh, difficult for them. So I use only very... Uh, limited uh, light like uh, 1 by 64 or 1 by 128 the mm -hmm. maximum is 1 by uh, 32 i want okay. uh, go more more light sometimes i use uh, that ttl okay and otherwise i always try to keep a minimum light so uh, most of the macros are uh, during uh, early morning or uh, late evening hours because uh, that time this uh, insect will be uh, more active so mm -hmm. you won't get it to uh, get a proper focused image. So uh, I used to go out with on late evening, like uh, after sunset, like 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m., like that. And they will be cooperative during that time. And, That's great. And this and is my favorite image, the portrait mm -hmm. of uh, Wandering Violin Mandis. Uh, 
I titled these images as uh, alien face because it's almost <laughs> similar to an alien. And uh, it was from my garden only. And uh, I was uh, doing my night shift that day. Uh -huh. And uh, around uh, 5.30 or 6 p.m., uh, sorry, 6 a.m., I just uh, uh -huh. visit my garden. I have a garden in uh, sit out also, in first floor. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so whenever I get uh, tired or bored, I just uh, go through the plants and all. So I noticed this guy, and uh, he was really super cool and more um, cooperative with me. So okay. I got a few images. After light came, also uh, I got some images uh, without uh -huh. flash, and that's my uh, favorite images in this all this macro alien feeds. <laughs> That's what I call Right. Uh, yeah, so it's already I uh, mentioned. And to get the maximum uh, detailed images, I use uh, a smaller aperture, like uh, F20 or more, 20, 22, mm -hmm. 25, something like that. So with a flashlight, uh, we can get more detailed images. As uh, I already mentioned, I don't like to uh, merge or, or like stacking all yeah. these things because I'm not familiar with those things. I'm not mm -hmm. uh, like editing. So uh, I always love to capture maximum result from field. So I use a uh, narrow aperture okay. for single shot. And these are also from Tamron 90M1. Mm -hmm. uh, first one is a robber fly with uh, mayfly kill. And mm -hmm. Great. I forgot. Uh, its name and this is also a blue banded bee that's what i said because uh, i have spent almost four or five months to uh, find these guys and mm -hmm. when i uh, find this uh, place where they are roosting i can go in time and find these things yeah and this is a uh, close up i mean face to face of that the blue banded bee only beautiful so, uh, the main drawback of 90mm is, uh, or any other macro lens uh, above 90mm, uh, we can't get uh, more closer images of a, a small subject. Uh, like their magnification will be one is to one, almost same size. Yeah. So uh, some other adapters like Reynolds DCR 250, 150, those uh, lenses are available. And uh, mm -hmm. using that one, we can get more closer and more magnified images. For DCR 250, I uh, will get 2.5x magnification, and for mm -hmm. uh, this one, uh, 150, we will get 1.5x. Uh, so, with the uh, one is one magnification of the lens, mm -hmm. and we can get this additional. So, we we'll, we can get uh, more closer images, more detailed images of uh, small subjects. No, okay. Uh, these are something with the uh, 90mm and Reynolds DCR 250. And the first one, that's what I uh, said already, that neon cuckoo bee. Uh, I saw many images from Instagram uh, by my friends. They are capturing uh, these beauties. I love uh, these subjects because that color, that neon color is uh, really uh, lovely. Yeah. So uh, I almost searched all my areas near to my home, but I didn't get a chance to watch them. So uh, when I was in my friend's home, uh, I just got my camera also. So uh, I just uh, explored those area and uh, suddenly this one, Neon uh, uh fly over my eyes and I, I didn't know, uh, know that this is the Neon uh, Kukubi. So it was almost like a blue color. And, okay. Uh, so I just so I just uh, waited there to find where uh, that, that one is going to roost. So I waited there for 30 minutes. It was almost uh, 6 p.m. So after sunset they won't uh, be more active they'll be resting so i just uh, waited there to find where he's roosting and i just uh, saw the place and captured few images and uh -huh. i only got three or four images because oh, okay. I, I don't take uh, more images of uh, these uh, small subjects and uh, the next one is a uh, skipper moth with uh, it's a kind of pee actually mm -hmm. butterflies won't pee uh, they just uh, difficult the water what they are uh, consuming mm -hmm. so it's almost like a pure water it's not like a urine or something it's 
they just uh, drink water and just uh, yeah. remove the excess water from their body like that and the next one is a uh, white crab spider with again with a skipper kill no uh, it was from my garden only so i just noticed one skipper uh, on this flower and uh, i think okay i can take a macro so that's fine so i just went there, uh, with my camera and uh, it was not because first time i didn't notice that spider because it was very small and the color of that flower also suits yeah it's perfect camouflage so i didn't notice that spider first i was only seeing that uh, skipper on that flower and i went there and uh, just when i go more closer then only like, i noticed this spider and uh, that spider was almost dead and uh, got a few uh, moments like this uh, to go six or seven some images i think the okay the next one i already shared in the previous uh, slide so we we'll move nice. to the next one okay so uh, now i'm uh, focusing more on capturing uh, macros in daylight okay. so i might avoid the flash so uh, first one is a uh, Mating pair of a butterfly, and the next one, same uh, wandering wild animals. This is what I said uh, previously. Yeah. Uh, chance to capture him in daylight also. Uh, he was there for uh, two three days in my garden. Uh huh. And uh, I think then uh, after three or four days, uh, some bird got it. Oh. <laughs> I didn't notice it. Okay. So, yeah. Last year, uh, 2021 January, I upgraded my uh, body to D500. Actually, mm -hmm. that's the perfect combination for wildlife photography. That's what I can say because that uh, uh, 10 frames per second and the focusing speed is really amazing. And uh, that uh, cost also it's uh, affordable. That's why I choose this one. And the first one was from uh, Cabinio only, and the second leopard images was from Jalana. Uh, I went the uh, two months back in oh. November. Yeah, November uh, I visited Jalana last November. Uh -huh. Okay, so and this image is is with uh, seventy three hundred mm only the second one uh -huh. because I got an injury in my hand and it was broken and plastered for two months. Oh. It happened from Jalana only means Rajasthan only. So oh. uh, by God's grace, uh, I took uh, seventy three hundred mm also. So. I capture. I got <laughs> chance to capture with Sandy Thrinamon. So I didn't uh, take my uh, 200 final because of the I can't uh, handle its weight because the okay. bone is already broken and it's plastered. So it was very difficult for me, but I didn't uh, fail on that one because I spent the money only to capture the leopard. So <laughs> I can't uh, sit in room and rest, take rest. So I went along with my friend and. Uh, Took with whatever I have, and uh, right. I got uh, around uh, uh, 100 plus images. Uh, we saw 12 individual leopards uh, along with cubs. So it was a really, a, it was really a nice journey. So these are something uh, with uh, D500 and uh, 200 to 500 mm -hmm. uh, The first one, uh, great hornbill from Niliamidi. Okay. And uh, the other two are from my area only. Kannur only. Mm -hmm. uh, Indian government with uh, catfish cats. And the next one is uh, Bulbul. Actually, they were, uh, we used to keep uh, water for birds uh, in uh, summertime. Uh -huh. So, in my my home also, in my, in my friend's home also. So, mm -hmm. it was kept in my friend's home. Okay. And, uh, he just uh, have a some big uh, vessel with uh, flow of water and these bulbuls are uh, regular regular visitor there to drink and to take bath and all so when uh -huh. i went there i got a chance to take that uh, romantic moments <laughs> of this <bulbul. laughs> and it was uh, for some 15 minutes i got uh, the bathing and this uh, love making everything from the it was really a, a nice day for me okay uh, these are two of my favorite images. Uh, first one from Kabini, and that's with 
the D500 with the 200 500 mm and the uh -huh. second one uh, uh, its name is rana from jalana okay. during my last trip uh -huh. and that's uh, d500 and the 7300 mm that 7300 mm is a kit lens only not a ex uh, expensive one so uh -huh. that kit lens only mm. and these are some of my favorite moments like that uh, birds pairs i uh, have not uh, these birds and mammals i have some collection for their pairs mother and uh, daughter some father and these kind of things yeah so this yeah. was my favorite uh, the first one uh, female elephant with uh, her cub uh, it's from uh, matupati near to mona okay uh, the second one from uh, tirumelli why not so in both these cases uh, i was actually laying down on that uh, mud and the <laughs> others uh, who was there was laughing at me because they don't know what I'm doing. I have a uh, bazooka like thing in my hand and just uh, <laughs> uh, mud and, uh, and they were smiling, laughing at me. But uh, <laughs> only I know uh, what you were doing with that uh, images. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, one of my favorite one from uh, Kabini. Actually, uh, you can see some wild balls uh, in background. Yeah. You can see here one and uh, two two and this uh, tiger was uh, actually trying to uh, hunt the baby in that uh, gang in that wild boar gang mm -hmm. one uh, baby with uh, uh, his mom was just uh, in that area and mm -hmm. two other male wild boars were nearby only so this tiger uh, actually mm -hmm. wanted them for around 15 to 20 minutes i think and okay. he, uh, when he get closer, those two males uh, from somewhere, they appeared and they started trying to uh, attack this one, tiger. So he okay. just uh, took the plan and <laughs> walked away. Mm -hmm. So it's the main predator there, but some situations, <laughs> they also failed. So here you can see that uh, those two male wild boars looking and uh, this one just walking away. Yeah, so great image, great story. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Mm. Ah, then uh, next, uh, seal out. Actually, it's my uh, favorite uh, kind of photography. And, mm -hmm. uh, this was my uh, first seal out image uh, in 2090, mm -hmm. captured with uh, 5300 and 7300 lens. And uh, I was not aware that the, uh, these kind of photographs are called seal out because I just uh, tried something different. Uh, okay. I saw the blackbird and uh, the light is against. So I think, okay, so I, think I can make something black and white shot. So I just captured it and uh, posted in Facebook. So mm -hmm. some uh, people commented like a nice silhouette and all. So I was wondering why they are uh, commenting on a bird photograph in like silhouette. So I just Googled it, what actually it means. Then not only I got to know <laughs> that this kind of photographs are called silhouette and that's the first moment uh, I just realized, okay, like this, we can make silhouette images. So this one with uh, D500 and 200 to 500 mm. So whenever I get a chance, uh, I try to make some silhouette images. Uh, so uh, as I already mentioned, my uh, area is a wetland. So these kind of uh, water birds, uh, cormorant, heron, everything, uh, they, they are quite common here. So we can easily find them. So the thing is, uh, we should be in the correct uh, place at the uh, perfect time. So, you know, we can't uh, capture silhouette on regular basis or uh, the situation demands, then only we can capture. So <coughs> and that's it. And uh, not only with that uh, black and white combination, uh, the, my favorite is capturing these birds in golden hour. So, Beautiful. Uh, yeah, thank you, ma'am. And uh, all these three are that uh, reflection of sun in uh, water, and uh, these three are captured in uh, evening hours during the sunset. Mm -hmm. uh, the first and uh, third is a uh, uh, great egret, and the uh, second one is a little cormorant again. And um, yeah, I like to capture uh, images like this in Silhouette. And the next one is, uh, this is my main uh, 
in the sense of that, like uh, placing the subject, placing the word in uh, center of the sun. So I use a, a narrow aperture like uh, f32. That's the minimum I can get with uh, 200 fandom. So all these are with uh, f32. And so uh, I can get the sun and only that uh, subject in middle of it. And rest all will be uh, in black. So only that uh, highlight part, highlighted part will be captured. So uh, I have some around 100 plus images like this one. And I almost spent around 10 years. Yeah, this uh, lockdown and work from home. Uh, I'm working from home since uh, 2020, 20 March, 2020 March. So uh, during all these days, I just visit the nearby places and mostly in um, early morning or uh, evening hours. So uh, if I'm in night shift, uh, I can go out in morning and uh, evening during sunset and sunrise. And if I'm in uh, like uh, day shift, like morning shift and all, I can go in evening hours. After my, completing my shift, I can go out uh, in the evening. So like this uh last one year i have collect uh, captured around uh, 100 plus different slot images and this is what i said i use a narrow aperture uh, to get the only the sun and the subject and, uh, these are captured recently because i uh -huh. uh, i said already i got a injury in my hand it was okay uh, so I can't just uh, sit in home all the day. So mm -hmm. once I uh, that uh, pain is almost gone, I took my defender and uh, with the seventy three hundred amount and go out with my brother. So these are with that combination. And the okay. uh, first one is a uh, uh, white throated kingfisher mm -hmm. uh, during sunset, and the second one is a. Uh, Found mail, uh, it was from Jalana actually uh, during mm -hmm. my uh, recent trip. And the uh, same day, I got injured in my hand, so I used the 70 tamarama. And the third one is a Siberian stone set that's uh, also from here only. Okay, okay, so that's uh, those are uh, those uh, photos are with the sun. And now, uh, this one captured uh, in night actually, the background is a moon. Oh, so now I have trying to uh, capture some silhouette with moon actually like uh, the spider on the web and uh, so trying to get some outlet images and all so right. hope i can make it soon thank you <laughs> so this also uh, captured recently uh, actually last week yeah last week mm -hmm. only captured this one uh, i was trying to capture uh, spotted outlet uh, there mm -hmm. was a uh, there nesting area in my home near to my home so i was trying to capture the outlet in middle of this moon but i didn't mm -hmm. properly so <laughs> i saw a, a spider and uh, just place like this <laughs> and so cool. it's almost end of my slide and uh, i know you already saw these images because they are these uh, Photographs are already published in uh, Postage magazine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one year back. And uh, this was from uh, near to my home only. And uh, this uh, Kingfisher uh, had a little baby, maybe two oh. or three in uh, Sotham, because it was their uh, breeding time. And uh, so uh, <coughs> I visited uh, that place. Uh, for a week and after that uh, my shift changed and it's again night shift so i didn't get the chance to get the babies uh, when uh, after yeah two weeks uh, i was in night shift and when i uh, went there after the shift uh, those uh, kids were almost grown up oh. so i didn't get the I, I was actually waiting for the feeding uh, images but i didn't get the chance maybe yeah, okay. this year or next year i can try and uh, these two pairs, I think the first one, I'm not, not sure that uh, who is male and female. Mm -hmm. They uh, both were always going out and uh, coming back to, back with some kills. And the another funniest thing is I didn't get any uh, fish kill for this uh, white throated kingfisher. Okay. I was the white kingfisher and uh, stockbill kingfisher and 
common kingfisher but i didn't get a chance for this guy with the fish catch uh, but i got uh, some this like this uh, lizards uh, other insect uh, dragonflies butterflies some um, this one uh, sunbird kill actually mm -hmm. i was actually wondered in that moment i never expected that kingfisher <laughs> kill another bird uh, <laughs> that the sunbird it was really uh, an amazing moment for me and uh, that that's it from my end uh, so uh, if we uh, have uh, enough practice and patience we can uh, capture with the water uh, device we have like uh, we don't need a 200 to 500 or 150 600 mm to capture birds and mammals we can capture with the 55 250 or 70 300 mm because many uh many are contacting me on instagram and uh, just asking uh, bro uh, which lens you are using or i want to buy a 200 to 500 or 150 600 but i don't have enough money so who will contact me i just inform them you can uh, buy a base model camera and a 70 300 lens if uh, you can afford or otherwise you can uh, try a second and use the one and with that 70 300 mm once you are practiced and uh, you know how to approach the birds then uh, whenever you get enough money you can buy a new camera or uh, you can upgrade the lens to a tele lens or 200 500 or 150 600 mm and then you can get even portrait images of the birds so that's what i always suggest uh, first try with the uh, normal like uh, 70 300 or 55 to 50 mm lens then update to a tele lens then you can create amazing result with that lens great so thank, to, you. Uh, thank you ma'am we may need to spend more time on that uh, lens to uh, get uh, what out the goal we have so we have to wait we have more patience we need uh, yeah the patient that's the main thing photography and yeah, that's it <laughs> that's a great shot thank you much uh, frog mouth uh, captured from uh, castle goat okay. so many people are going to tate card uh, i was about to ask yeah many people are going there but i got a chance to capture this one from castle goat uh, okay. so it was near to my one of my friends home joe mill uh, actually <clears throat> one day he just shared me a, an image on WhatsApp and asked, bro, what is this? Uh, what is this bird? Because uh, the people who saw this bird for the first time, they actually uh -huh. worried it was something uh, like an alien or something like that. So he just <laughs> called me and asked, bro, what is this guy? <laughs> what is this thing? So I just uh, said, it's a form of the only. No need to worry about this thing. So <laughs> maybe next day, <laughs> I went there to capture. Okay. Uh, more people uh, went there and uh, got this. Yeah, so they may fly away. So I just go there on the very next day and I got this. Uh, I think, yeah, it's with the 200 300 only. Okay. 5300, I think. Yeah, that time I have 5300. Great. So that's it. Uh, so my slides. And do you have any? We have no. a bunch of questions, uh, so if I'm going to get into that, um, I'm going from the bottom to the top. So the last one was from Hari Krishnan. Hi Hari, uh, the question is, Avinash, I would like to know um, to know that in reverse macro, uh, how you are managing the aperture because the lens have no electronic contact with the camera. Yeah, actually that's a good question because. Uh many others contacted me on uh, because i have a, a youtube channel i in malayalam only and i'm explained all these things there mm -hmm. so uh with the reverse macro uh, actually we can't uh, control the aperture from camera if it's uh the canon and nikon they have different mechanisms so mm -hmm. i'll uh, start with nikon mm -hmm. uh, for nikon lenses we have some uh, little knob in back set actually mm -hmm. that uh, connect with camera and when uh, we are changing the uh, aperture from camera actually uh, th that thing only just uh, adjusting from lens so we can uh, control that with our uh, hand just uh, with one hand we can uh, control it but uh, what i'm doing is i'm just uh, putting a match sticks there so uh, only that gap i think it will be around 
20 plus only, maybe 20 or 22 plus only it's open. So if you open uh, the maximum, I mean that uh, maximum aperture, we won't get uh, uh, more detailed images. So I always uh, try to use a narrow aperture and that's what I'm doing. I'm just uh, putting a match, match stick there. Just, uh, ma'am, give me a moment. I will uh, take my lens. Yeah. Yeah, as I, I think I saw a request on uh, a sub from somebody if we can show this over here. So that's what um, uh, he's going to do. Uh, Avinash is going, he just went to get his camera, I believe, along with the lens so that he can uh, display how and how he is doing this reverse macro stuff. It's going to be an experience, guys. So, uh, yeah, here is the uh, Nikon lens. Okay. okay so if you yeah. uh so you can see uh yeah there's a uh, small knob here here yes so we yes. can uh just uh change it just so we okay. can okay we can just okay. control uh, like this aperture so okay. this is what i'm doing uh for my macro mm -hmm. and but in canon actually it's a different uh, mm -hmm. uh we don't have a knob like this in canon lenses so what we can do is we can uh, mount the lens normally and we can set the aperture what we want uh, 15 20 something like that then mm -hmm. uh, dismount the lens without uh, turning off the camera mm -hmm. just dismount it and connect it reversely so the aperture will sit uh, in that oh. lens and we can capture like that canon works and nikon is different great we have so so many messages i'm just going to go through the question so techno info okay. said hi and uh abhinanta sent some hearts uh, <laughs> nanta kishore also sending some hearts and hi abhinash bro great collection hi, abhinash from yadu shibu said wellness uh, well okay. done abhinash and then uh, hari uh, harshit a beautiful composition harshit. Uh, yes, and then um, a light painting. Uh, that's I think uh, when you were showing the images of the silhouettes and um, uh, people, uh, Hari was talking about that. Techno Info said a uh, hi to me, Arjun, and the uh, Techno Info, hello, dears. Then Ashik, hi. which bird species among among that one you captured? You think is more difficult to get a proper uh, shot due to the uh vigorous activities for him he said it is sunbird so which one you think which will give you a tough time in the field uh actually uh, for me it's a uh, tailor bird because i didn't get a <laughs> single chance to capture that uh, i have something uh, many uh, near to my garden they are all visit regularly but they are super active when compared uh -huh. to sunbird because i have uh, some some sunbird uh, images with the 70 mm also but uh -huh. i didn't get a single images of a tailor bird for me that's okay uh, so i hope uh, ashik you got the answer then arjun again said hi ajit said happy to see you ajit jos um arjun is keep on sending hearts to you <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, harshit hornbill shot is beautiful avinashita that's, uh, that's actually uh, we were together only me harshit uh, hari hari krishna you know ma'am yeah i know hari hari. yeah uh, and uh, abhishek abhishek uh, some other guy also and we uh, forward together only and we got uh, some amazing shot from nilia okay then sabin pv good works uh, brother uh, you have Thanks deep knowledge you. about each and every macro subject. That's great. That's from Hari. Kiran said, uh, hello. Um, uh, Hari, have one more question. Avinash, how, how are you getting the black background? Is it done in post-processing? No, 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 no. Actually, uh, if you use a flashlight, uh, we can capture. That uh, technique is uh, low-key images. If you have... Uh, light on the subject and less light in the background we can capture even from natural light also we can capture these kind of images uh, i think i have few and i will uh, show it later i think you can check my instagram because i already shared some low key images high key images uh, everything there and okay. uh, yeah that's it it's uh, almost a, a low key image because we are using a flash light so when flash fire 
only the uh, subject will uh, get enough light and background uh, i'm not using any additional flashlight for background so definitely there won't be enough light in background and i will get background as uh, dark so it's not a post processing it's uh, what i'm capturing great great so hari i hope you got uh, uh, your answer and uh, he got a youtube channel as well as uh, uh, instagram so any of you have any further doubt in in line with the black or white background you can check that then surat said uh, hello awesome and uh, harshid again said hi then um, let's go uh, uh, then yeah there is another message like that school you are living in for us even i was surprised to hear that you have 200 plus species of flowers in your house that's amazing <laughs> thank you thank you yeah then got the same that's, an, that's kind of another passion for me uh, planting oh, okay kind of flowers <laughs> that's great that's so uh, there's another uh, technique also because i don't want to means uh, i don't need to go out for macros so the butterflies bees and they will come to me <laughs> so i can capture them easily just turn it to plant some my sister had the same technique but then uh, mm-hmm. right now what is happening is she started with one cat one cat i don't know from where it came now at home mm-hmm. we have 20 cats and half of them mm-hmm. spend uh, uh, full time with her in her room 20 <laughs> cats can you believe and i don't know how many dogs it's all stray dogs stray cats uh, it's not like this high panda animals mm-hmm. and everybody is coming uh, our house become a mini zoo right now or a cat and uh, dog with your place but because of that uh, we are not getting much birds because before the cats episode where there there were so many birds we have around 30 people yeah. trees are cats are always house. try to uh, catch these birds so they won't yeah anyway that's that's good to know Uh, macro photography is amazing uh, by radha krishnan and then mm-hmm. mac mass bro keep rocking uh, bab bhavitra uh, then radha krishnan tateka sanctuary is the better place to shoot birds in kerala otherwise visit coal fields in thrissur uh, where many mm-hmm. different varieties of birds visit during september correct correct i visited uh, coal uh, two times uh, one for that flamingo and one for uh strawberry fins that uh, red dawn okay uh, i know uh, all those places huh? and uh-huh. yeah it's uh, really an amazing place to capture the birds during the migration time there will be thousands of birds and we can oh. uh, capture them easily and tateka actually i didn't uh, went there hope i can make it so then yeah somebody call you a macro king avinash eten uh, that's arjun <laughs> <laughs> i think arjun is your biggest fan <laughs> uh, thank you my my life story is mentioned uh, we need a tutorial on macro reverse lens technique as uh, avinash just mentioned you can check his youtube or actually his, uh, uh, my youtube channel is in malayalam only uh, okay. if uh, someone is requesting in english i can make an appointment Uh, and you can call me on instagram i i will uh, i'm always uh, free to uh, i think yeah you can because we have so many requests on that if you can add a tutorial on that that would be great for you sure. i mean great for people who are looking for that as well yeah. i think you know you know already prepared uh, some video in english and uh, uh, yeah. uh, his work is uh, published in nikon's uh, official site as well okay there are some documents and it's uh, mm-hmm. published in published by nikon uh, and uh, you can check that also okay that's great thank Because, you uh, he's my mentor in macro photography kiran ke mm-hmm. <laughs> uh then avinash is a pro in macro love your macro by hari krishnan um i just love that tiger shot uh, by harshad uh, then uh, great to see avinash here that's uh, nick eyes view uh malabar jain squirrel shot is great by my wildlife stories yeah i think it's a lot of um, beautiful messages um, i'm i don't see any further questions as such reni said hello uh, someone someone with 
Rao said hello. Mm-hmm. Gio Simon said hello. Nayedu Krishnan said hello. I'm 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 sorry. I'm if I'm missing some names because I can see so many names over here, and everybody said hi and some great words to you. I think recently I got some more messages. Kiran bro, Abhinash bro, they are my mentors in reverse macro. Thanks, brother. I'm really happy to uh, hear that. Uh, then, yeah, I mean, um, somebody in Niveed want to talk something in, uh, talk some Malayalam words. Yes, I think that is the only reason. It's, you know, there is no disrespect for Malayalam or Malayalis. It's our language and we love it. And it's just the thing is that, you know, uh, if we can spread the knowledge to a little more people when it comes to the numbers, <laughs> that's better. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so that that's the only reason for choosing a different language other than uh, Malayalam. So thank you all for your support and thank you, Avinash. That was really a beautiful session and um, really thank you so much for your time. Thank, and thank you, uh, we really appreciate it. Yes, yeah, thank you. yeah, I should thank you because for this uh, amazing opportunity and uh, for a beginner like me, uh, this means a lot. And uh, it's a really, uh, I'm really happy to be a part of this. And uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Hermes, sir. I think uh, due to some, uh, yeah, he got an appointment with the doctor, so that's the reason he's he just not he, here. he informed me. So, and thank you guys, thank you, posters, for this amazing opportunity. We appreciate your support. I'm yeah, always you. open uh, on uh, Instagram or Twitter, and you can message me in case of any doubts uh, regarding uh, macros, out anything. I'm always uh, happy to help you all. Yeah. So we have already shared Abhinash uh, contact details in our posters. So any of you would like to know anything about the reverse, uh, you know, uh, that lens and the techniques. Um, so if you would like to know anything about it, then please get in touch with him. Also visit his uh, profile. He got some amazing collection. Mm-hmm. And it's always a pleasure to see more young people getting into this and sharing their knowledge without any kind of hesitation. So if you, any of you have some other suggestion where you would like to hear from them, do inbox us. We can definitely get in touch with these uh, new artists and uh, can see if there is a possibility if they are interested to share their experience as well so on that note i would like to say thank you thank you so much avinash on behalf of myself hermes and um, posters and uh, from all our audience too thank you thank you very much thank you guys uh, thank you for everyone who has this video and thank you all for your support and love and share Uh, so that was um, Avinash and his beautiful story starting from a very base kit lens and um, uh, right now with a D500 mm along with a 200-500 that was a beautiful journey he took us from step by step how he started to learn how he um, you know we all at growing pace I could really relate it we all start with something which is very basic from mobile then get into a camera then get into a basic lens going upgrading as we learn as we still keep that current in us energy in us so i hope uh, this was an inspiring session for me i hope it was an inspiring for you all too so in case if you, any of you have any other such suggestion on such wonderful sessions do get in touch with us we can definitely try to contact your suggestions and try to see if there is a possibility to get a session with them Otherwise, you know how the rate is going on with this Omicron and um, COVID and all over the world as well as in Kerala. So please stay safe and uh, take care, guys. I think uh, we have a couple more um, sessions coming up soon, uh, as we do always. You know, we will be posting it in advance in social media. So see you soon. Till then, take care, stay safe with lots of love from our side. Bye-bye. Bye.